Hey guys, welcome back to the Silver Motion Horror Movie Bench in which we enjoy our road to Halloween watching as many horror movies as we can. Today, well, at the time of this recording, we're about 25 days away from Halloween and we're going to celebrate it by talking about another 10 horror movies. Remember that there is no specific order uh, when I make this list, it's just about uh, the order in which I watched the movies. Here we go. Number one, The Silence of the Lambs. In The Silence of the Lambs, the plot follows Clarice, an FBI trainee, as she seeks the help of the brilliant but incarcerated serial killer, Dr. Hannibal Lecter. He is helping her catch another serial killer known as Buffalo Bill. The core of the film lays in the complex relationship between Clarice and Hannibal while providing a suspenseful and intense hunt for the main killer. It explores themes of psychology, manipulation, and the darkness of the human mind. I'll get my only couple of nitpicks out of the way. The first one is the overall look of the film. It just seems a bit dated for me, guys, especially during the intro and a few different scenes. I truly don't know if this was simply a stylistic choice by the director, Jonathan Dean, but to me the cinematography looks closer to a film like Taxi Driver, which was made back in 1976, than something like Interview with a Vampire, for example, made only three years later, or Scream, made in 1996. Uh, I don't think it's a matter of budget either. Scream was cheap, a cheaper movie and it looks much better. Uh, you know, way crispier than The Silence of the Lambs. And again, at the end of the day, probably one of you guys know that this was done intentionally or maybe there was a uh, some type of change in the, you know, in the technology during those years and I'm not aware of it. Uh, so go ahead and let me know in the comments so that I can learn a little more about the subject. Now, my second and last nitpick is the one phrase in which he does the whole... <laughs> to me, when you compare how Hannibal Lecter behaves through the rest of the movie, this seems completely out of character to me and a bit forced. Almost as if the film is trying to scare us, the audience. It's still memorable and I understand why it's done. I just simply always found it unnecessary. Now let's get to the good stuff, which is literally everything else. I love how the film makes us feel right in the shoes of Clarice, through camera angles in combination with how Judy Foster depicted the character. She's definitely not alone when it comes to the masterful acting since pretty much everyone in this movie couldn't be any better. Talk about the perfect combo of great casting choices and amazing acting. Of course, Sir Anthony Hopkins gives one of the greatest villain performances of all time. This just, it just goes without saying. I don't want to say too much about this one since it definitely deserves its own video, but long story short, it is a must watch for any cinema fans in general, but especially those who enjoy a solid horror crime thriller. 10 out of 10 for what it could have been because The Silence of the Lambs is bloody perfect. On number two, we have Annihilation. Annihilation is a science fiction thriller film directed by Alex Garland. The plot follows a group of scientists who enter a mysterious and mutating zone known as the Shimmer to investigate its effects and the disappearance of previous expeditions. The film explores themes of self-destruction, identity, and the unknown making it a visually stunning and thought-provoking experience. The first 15 to 20 minutes of this movie creates a level of curiosity that I hadn't felt in a very long time. You know that I have no idea what's going on and I love it feeling. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about here. I was so excited when I found that the director of Dread, a very, very underrated film, was also responsible for this film. Now, this movie, while, while still very well-directed, uh, beautiful cinematography, wonderful acting, and an overall solid idea, it fails to keep you as engaged as Dread did. It's hard to identify why, because there are so many shocking moments 
and all of the elements that make a great film are present here, including some captivating dialogue, gorgeous and grotesque imagery. It has so much going for it. All I can say is that the pacing, some flashbacks, some dreams, and maybe even the soundtrack, it just doesn't keep you or, or pull you into the atmosphere that Annihilation is trying to create. That's what I'd be saying if I gave up halfway through the movie. Because holy shit, guys, this is a slow cook without a doubt, but there's some stuff in here only your most disturbing nightmares can conjure. There's one scene in this film that literally changed my brain chemistry, and the man who stands in front of you right now is a much different human than the one who innocently went into watching this fucking movie. Taking everything into consideration, I do believe that Annihilation gets an 8 out of 10 for what it could have been, making this a movie I believe you won't regret watching. On number 3 we have Halloween 1978, so the original. Halloween plot centers on Michael Myers, a mass killer who escapes from a mental institution and returns to his hometown to stalk and terrorize a babysitter, uh, and blah 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 guys, I, I mean, if you do not, if you haven't watched Halloween or you're not aware of Halloween, it's it's like saying that you don't know about, you don't know about The Exorcist, it's, you know, I don't feel like I need to talk about the plot here, I'm pretty sure you heard of it, and I'm, I'll be just wasting your time by telling you the plot of this movie, so I'm just gonna go ahead and skip that, sorry if I come off a little, like, violent here, but, you know, if you don't know about it, Guys, let's keep in mind this movie was made in 1978 with a budget of 300k, which, adjusted for inflation today, is about 100 billion dollars. Now it's like 1.4 million. Director John Carpenter did so much with so little. He pretty much single-handedly created the slasher genre, and I simply don't have time in this video to list all of the subsequent movies that were totally inspired by this masterpiece. I love how it takes a page from Jaws with a less is more approach, increasing tension slowly through the use of great sound effects and a memorable soundtrack, which by the way was also written and performed by the director himself. Now. For those of us who watch 150 horror movies every year, I do have to admit that the film can feel a bit stale at times, and the scares don't hit you like the first time you watch it. With that said, this movie is an absolute classic, and I, I definitely recommend it, and it's, I believe it's a perfect starter horror movie, and it will open the door to a whole other bunch of great scary movies that are heavily inspired by this. And yeah, Halloween gets a 10 out of 10 for what it could have been, because it is bloody perfect. On number 4 we have Annabelle Comes Home. The plot of Annabelle Comes Home revolves around the Warrens, paranormal investigators who bring the possessed doll Annabelle to their artifact room for safekeeping, as they do with every, you know, every item that is haunted or anything like that, you know, they have this, this room of like... It's like a treasure room of nightmares, you know? It's like, it's great, especially if you have children in your house. Oh yeah, let's have this room. It's amazing. When Annabelle awakens, malevolent spirits in the room, chaos occurs, of course. And their daughter and her babysitter must confront a night of terror as they try to contain the supernatural forces released. This movie is directed by Gary Doberman. Uh, for the deep research that I've done, I see that this gentleman has been involved mostly as a writer in many other well-known horror movies such as the original Annabelle, It, Chapter 1 and 2, The Nun, yeah, some better, some worse, uh, but it was with this film that we finally got a chance to see how he'd do on the director's chair, and I for one was very satisfied. I feel the movie looks so crisp, the cinematography is on point, and that overall look helps convey all the scary this movie has to offer. Cameraman and set designer definitely helped a lot, making us feel like we're right in there, in the house, with our favorite demonic doll, Annabelle. Is this movie perfect? No. Is it a good time? 
and has a decent plot with some cool scary moments, absolutely. Annabelle Comes Home gets a 7 out of 10 for what it could have been, making it solid material, and side note, same director Gary Dauberman, I hope I pronounced that correctly, will be directing the new remake of Salem's Lot and I'm definitely looking forward to that one. On number 5 we have Jeepers Creepers. Jeepers Creepers follows two siblings, Trish and Derry, who encounter this menacing someone while driving home for spring break. This someone, quote unquote, known as the Creeper, uh, begins to stalk and terrorize them. As they investigate, they discover the horrific truth about this guy, and I'm gonna leave it at that, guys. I really don't wanna, I don't wanna give you any more of the plot, because I have a feeling that some of you might have not watched this movie yet, and I don't wanna spoil it. Jeepers Creepers is such a cool experience the first time you watch it. So I'd like to start by pointing out that this movie pulls off something that in theory should be easy, but most films either fail to do or simply doesn't feel as real as in this film. I'm talking about making a brother and a sister feel like they're actually a brother and a sister. They don't even have to look alike. They just have to convey the special connection only real siblings have. These two absolutely knock it out of the park and making us believe they're actually related. There's something quite special about this movie. First of all, let's get the obvious out of the way. This is a pretty scary movie. I know, I know. Some of you are gonna be like, hey, Jeepers Creepers is not scary. And you know, we can agree to disagree, okay? You can go to the comments and tell me why you aren't scared of JP. That's fine. This movie has all the elements that make a great scary movie. The story, the horror, its character, the dialogue, how disturbing it is. It's just so well directed and the atmosphere is simply put perfect. All of the unanswered questions about Jeepers Creepers make the film even scarier and will have you doing some research after watching it. If you haven't watched Jeepers Creepers yet, believe me when I tell you that <laughs> Quick side note before I reveal the, uh, the rating of the movie. At the time of this recording, Jeepers Creepers is free on YouTube. I'm just saying, guys. If you are a horror movie fan and still have not watched Jeepers Creepers, believe me when I tell you that this gets a 10 out of 10 for what it could have been. And yes, Jeepers Creepers is bloody perfect. On number six, we have Pearl. Pearl, an extraordinary origin story, is a prequel to the movie called X and it takes us back to 1918 to get to know the origins of some of the characters we encounter later on in the movie X. And that is me doing my best not spoiling too much of either movie. It was time for us to revisit the Ty West directed movie called X, and by pure chance we found that there was a prequel to the film. And here we go. Well, this was a weird one, eh? I do understand this is a solid piece of cinema, especially if you're into original and unique twisted horror. Director Ty West does an incredible job at creating this extremely colorful atmosphere that's filled with <laughs> moments and at the same time packed with beautiful shots. I mean, some of the photography in this movie is like shockingly gorgeous and then you get hit in the face with something shockingly horrifying, or just very awkward. The type of scene that makes you feel uncomfortable, but at the same time, you don't want to stop looking at it. This movie is grotesque in the most hypnotic way. I know I'm not really saying a lot about the movie itself, trust me when I say that I'm trying here, but all that comes to mind is... Oh man! Oh God! Oh man! Oh man, oh god, oh I know the more I talk about it, the more pumped I seem to get. Like I you know, I started when I started it, it almost seemed like oh maybe he didn't like it, but guys, I, I don't wanna oversell it, okay? But this is one of the best horror movies that I've watched lately, and Mia Goth delivers some of the best acting I have ever seen 
in any horror movie. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that Pearl is just a few tweaks away from being bloody perfect and he gets a 9 out of 10 for what it could have been. And now, number 7, we have to talk about X. In X, 2022, a group of actors decide to rent a 1979 version of an Airbnb to shoot an adult film. And by that, I mean a pornographic movie. What they don't know is that their hosts are going to make this an impossible and deadly task. I'd like to start by pointing out what, to me at least, is the main difference between Pearl and this film. And that is that even though both movies take place virtually in the same location and pretty much nothing about this place has changed even though about 50 years have passed, the overall tone and atmosphere are very, very different. Don't get me wrong, you can of course draw some similarities, but Pearl is way more colorful. Pearl has this musicality and strong contrast between how the movie looks and what the movie is showing you. When it comes to X, you can tell director Ty West was already working on developing that great contrast that I love so much about the movie Pearl. I know I keep comparing the two, but it's just impossible not to. Both movies are a breath of fresh air for the horror genre in general while paying homage to some old slasher and exploitation movies from the 70s. This film masterfully explores the themes of sexuality and the business of sex, morals, aging, and mortality. While Pearl is my favorite of the two, uh, I still consider this a great film, and it gets an 8 out of 10 for what it could have been. I, I truly believe that you won't regret watching this one. On number 8, we have The Ring. 2002. In The Ring, a cursed videotape that, when watched, causes the viewer to receive a phone call with a sinister message for telling their death in seven days. So yeah, you just hear like, seven days, and then you're fucked! A journalist called Rachel Keller discovered the tape's existence after her niece dies under mysterious circumstances, and she delves deeper into the mystery. Rachel becomes entangled in the curse, leading her on a race against time to unravel its secrets and break the deadly cycle before her own seven days are up. First of all, I'd like to mention that this is a remake of a Japanese film made in 1998 with the same plot, but it was this version that created the phenomenon most people my age remember today. Guys, this is a good horror movie, especially the very first time you watch it. It has lost a bit of charm over the years, but I still believe if you haven't watched it in a while, or if you just haven't watched it, The Ring has a very unsettling atmosphere, and I really actually that, like the, the, the dark green grayish filter that it gives the whole movie this tone that it sets it apart from most other horror movies of the time. There is quite a bit of unique camera work, especially in the film within the film. Great acting all around, especially by Naomi Watts on the lead role and young actor David Dorfman. They truly take the movie to the next level and shit, the film is very scary for a PG-13 movie. It is also a solid mystery, but I can see some people finding the pacing a bit slow at times. Ah, the memories. When this movie came out, everyone was into the whole If you watch this film, you'll die in seven days. I believe The Ring is one of the greatest horror movie remakes ever made, and it gets an 8 out of 10 for what it could have been. This is definitely a movie you will not regret watching until seven days have passed and then. Now, moving on to number nine, we have Brightburn. Brightburn, real simple idea, guys. What if young Superman wasn't nice? What if he became a villain instead of a hero? I feel that the director is able to do a lot, and I mean a lot, with a very little budget, uh, the, the movie looks great. It's hard to point out where this movie went wrong. 
it, it, I mean, a movie with this plot should never, never feel boring. But at times, I don't know. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know. I don't know how to point it out. But the pacing. There's something about this movie that doesn't keep you as engaged as it should. When I heard the idea that they were making a movie in which you know young Superman is evil and this is going to be a rated R super bloody movie and then I watched it I'm not gonna lie guys I was kind of disappointed with this one it definitely suffers from the six flags effects you know you you you, you you're all excited yeah we're going to six flags and then you go to six flags and you spend eight hours there and out of the eight hours you know six hours you're just waiting in line to get on the right you know so yeah it, it's kind of like that I do think it's worth mentioning, again, the movie looks really good, everybody's trying to do their best, and the third act is pretty solid. And it is still gets, uh, I don't know, it, it gets a 6 out of 10 for what it could have been, because at its core, uh, I do believe that it serves its purpose. Now finally, on number 10, we have Pet Cemetery: the remake. Pet Cemetery remake follows a family as they move to a rural home in Maine, near a mysterious pet cemetery with the power to bring the dead back to life. After a family tragedy, they are tempted to use the cemetery's dark powers, but they soon realize that sometimes dead is better. I truly don't know why this movie got the hate it got on release. I, I, I remember liking it quite a bit the first time I watched it, and now after second viewing, I still think this is one creepy ass horror movie with a solid premise, intense moments, very messed up imagery, and perfect tone and atmosphere for, for what this film is supposed to be. Man, there's a couple moments that really mark you when you watch them. Also, John Lithgow is here, and just because of that, this gets a 10 out of 10, and there's nothing more to... Uh, of course, I'm joking, guys. Uh, comedy, yeah, we're doing it, people. But... I mean, for what it could have been, it, it does get a, like at least a 6 out of 10 for what it could have been because it serves its purpose. But to me, it's like almost, it's almost solid material, man. You know what? 6.9 out of 10. It, it serves a solid material. Abomination! All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, like, subscribe, hit the bell. And talk to me in the comments if you enjoy the content. Uh, this is the Silver Motion. I will be seeing you on the next one.